Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's your girl Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. So today we're going to be reacting to the Army of Satan per 19 Education System Modern Slavery. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Education is the key to success. It makes us aware of knowledge, skills and ethics that has been there in the world, which we learn as it helps us to know the purpose of our existence, to progress and to develop further. But today's education system is not really designed to let you reach the real success. It just gives you the feeling that you are learning and becoming more and more intelligent, while in reality it narrows your perception of the reality to a very limited amount. Because one of the most effective ways to control the society is to deprive the people of their free thinking ability and not giving them the chance to think out of the box. The modern education system is established by the influential businessmen to enslave the rest of the society by turning them into a skilled and obedient worker in order to operate their factories and offices. Therefore, they structure the schools to get mindless workers rather than free-minded and independent thinkers. If you uh, sat around a table and you said, right, what we need to do is we need to find some way of getting young people to see the world where the way we want them to see it, mm -hmm. so that by the time they become adults, they are completely um, following the reality we want them to believe in. Someone might say, well, they might not have it like, but you know the ideal thing? What we do is we have a system where we take children away from their parents at least five days a week, all day, from about the age of four and five, and we have control of their minds until they're about 17, 18. That would be ideal. But well, of course, that's what happens. Yeah. It's called the education system. Yes. And it's indoctrination. One of the methods is spending more class time and energy on behavioral conditioning than teaching. Behavioral conditioning means using rules, rewards and punishment to intentionally mold someone's thoughts, feelings and behaviors. Too many school rules are unnecessary and intended more to make students feel powerless and angry than improving the learning environment. Debt is control. So let's get young people up to their neck in debt, massive debt, um, which they then spend the rest of their lives paying off. Just to be bloody programmed with the system's version of events. This is a great list. This is what you learn from school. Truth comes from authority. Intelligence is the ability to remember and repeat. Accurate memory and repetition are rewarded. Non-compliance is punished. Conform intellectually and socially. This guy, H. L. Mencken, said, the aim of public education is not to spread enlightenment at all. It is simply to reduce as many individuals as possible to the same self-level, to breed a standard citizenry, to put down dissent and originality. And there was a study 
There was a study at the William and Mary uh, College in Virginia where they studied the personality changes as people went through school. And they found this, a massive decline in creativity as children have become less emotionally expressive, less energetic, less talkative and verbally expressive, less humorous, less imaginative, less unconventional, less lively and passionate, less perceptive, less apt to connect seemingly irrelevant things, dots, um, less synthesizing and less likely to see things from a different angle. That's what they found happens as people go further and further into system. And now uh, they want to create, they take this system and they want to make the kids pay for it with debt for much of the rest of their lives, right? Now, here's my suggestion, here's my question. What do you want to bloody do it for? What do you want to do it for? Why do you want to go through this system and have them tell you what you must think about every bloody thing? And if you don't tell the exam paper what it's told you to believe, then you won't pass. The education system is also structuring textbooks and classes to be as fragmented as possible so that everything is learned in unrelated chunks. This way students memorize the facts in each chunk of a subject and can solve the homework problems. But in their minds, this never melt together in a big picture that gives them truly intuitive understanding of the subject necessary to use the ideas in original ways. Students therefore become skilled in doing things only in the way they are taught. They lose the ability to come up with better ways, and that's how they become like programmable robots that do their jobs without asking questions. Why our students are increasingly incapable of thinking, why they can't reason, why we have some of the worst test scores all over the world, even though I'm totally against the testing, but even by the metrics of their own system, their system is failing. When you look at the boredom that exists in modern American education, you look at the boredom of the students, you look at the, the faces that they carry to school, you look at them, and I've been in classes, I've taught, I've lectured all over the United States, in universities all over the United States. You look at their faces, and you look at the boredom. One, because they're wondering, why am I studying this? What is this for? What's the purpose of this? The smart ones check out early on, like Bill Gates, who never got a degree from Harvard because he dropped out. Th that's what happens to the smart ones. Steve Jobs dropped out. All of these billionaires, they dropped out because they learned early on, I want to make money and this is not the way to make money. So if you go to college to earn a livelihood, you're wasting your time. You're even now being encouraged to drop out by some of the leading, by some of the leading CEOs in America, encouraging students to drop out, o open sourcing. Because most of what these students are, are learning in school will not apply to anything. It's not going to give them some kind of vocational training. And this is the reality. There is a strong argument that college now is obsolete. Lord Alfred Whitehead, one of the greatest mathematicians of the 19th and 20th century, said that the single most important form of mathematics in the modern world is statistics. And they don't even teach that in high school. And yet a junior high school student could master it. It's not a difficult subject. Statistics is determining so much of what is around us. They're using statistics constantly, and yet students are not taught statistics until they take a course in college. They might have a little bit in college, in, in high school, but it's, it's, it's not much. Why are they studying geometry? Why study algebra? They're, what, they're sitting there wondering, what does this mean? Why am I doing this? Why do I care what uh, 2x plus 3x equals. I don't care because there is no overarching meaning to all of these things. There is no real educational philosophy behind these things. If you look historically, the, all of these things had meaning. And I'll just give you a quick example. We call these the liberal arts. If you ask anybody that has a bachelor of arts, what is the arts that you're a bachelor in? They will not be able to tell you. They won't even know that arts comes from a word which means tool. Tool. Arma, army is, is from the same root. 
Arithmetic is the same root. Arithmetic is ars metrica, the tool to measure by. So the liberal arts are liberating tools. They're tools that free your mind from the, the inherent prejudices of the mind. Now, the liberal arts was distinguished from the servile arts, vocational training, where you go to college to learn how to do something as a vocation. And these were the servile arts because they were simply things that you learned and then you could go out and earn a livelihood through those things. This is largely what the college and the university has become in the West. It is no longer a place to pursue truth. It's a place to pursue money. And because those making the most money are those who are most adept at cheating, cheating has become widespread in our schools and universities. This is a major problem. Another method is hammering into the minds of students a single path through life. The path that makes you think in a certain way and is constantly telling you, go to high school, get your diploma, do your masters and find a stable job. Do all of this, otherwise you won't be successful in your life. Why um, is it the done thing that you, you go through school, kitty kitty, and then you, you then have to go to university. Oh yes, you go to university, that's what you have to do. Oh, you've got a chance to go to university and you're not taking it. Oh, you're crazy. Oh, I'm not speaking to you anymore and I'm your father and all this bollocks, right? Well, and I, and I see, I see these, um, these protests of young people and students in London and stuff over the ever-increasing uh, uh, fees that are being charged to get ever-increasing debt for control over young people at the earliest possible uh, uh, stage in their lives. And I see them do their protests and all that stuff and that's great. And then they go back to bloody college and university. The only way it's going to change is if they refuse to bloody go. Don't take part in the system. And they say, well, I won't get a good job if I don't go to university. I know university students are packing shelves in supermarkets. Surely you have the, 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 the creative ability to create a life without going through this friggin' sausage machine. Come on, we can do this. We don't need the bloody system. A further method includes twisting facts in textbooks to create a false picture of the world. History and science books are the worst, because they are oversimplified for the average mind and written by committees with political agendas. So the actual picture given to the students is rarely accurate, because it's intended to steer them towards holding those opinions supported by the system. The whole system, because we, 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 we have two hemispheres of the brain, the left brain which is about words and this world reality and, you know, the, the, the perception of this reality. We have the right brain, which is where you get creativity, inspiration, and uh, connection, and then you've got this corpus colossum which connects the two. Um, first of all, um, we use a fraction of our brains, why is that? Um, and the other thing is that what the system does is it turns out left brain prisoners, they run the system. And it does it by putting information through schools and colleges and universities into the left brain which it then says at a uh, time of an exam give me all that back and if you if you tell me what I've told you well enough to believe then you'll uh, pass the exam and you'll be very successful mm. um, any anyone that takes that information into the right brain and puts their their spin on it or questions it or sees through it and man and puts that in the exam, um, they are um, perceived as a, a disruptive influence in the classroom. Yes, yes they are. And, and so um, what happens is for you to become a doctor, overwhelmingly a politician, mm -hmm. a journalist, someone uh, often in um, industry, all these areas um, that uh, control the system, the professions, the professions. Yes. lawyers, yes. I mean on and on we go, you have to have gone through your young life constantly taking information into your left brain and regurgitating it out on exam papers 
Um, to become a teacher, you have to go through that process. Then you go through teacher training college where you're, you're taught how to do it to others. And then you let loose on the children. Yes. The whole system um, is run by left brain prisoners. And if you look at the school system, things that stimulate this side of the brain, the uniqueness, they are constantly cut back um, in, in favor of, 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 of left brain uh, curriculums. Um, and this is systematic. I have to get this over to people. This is not systematic at the level of, you know, people who administer it into reality. It is um, coldly calculated in the um, shadowy areas where these concepts first come from. Yeah. And they know what they're doing. Yeah, these examinations, what's happening is that, you know, to fit in, to be part of the so-called in-crowd, you have to reconfirm the beliefs of the hierarchy. Exactly. I don't know how many of you know about the Tuskegee syphilis study, which was where physicians in this country injected syphilis into African Americans to see the effects over time. It's a well-known study. But only recently we found out not only that were they doing it in Mississippi, they were also doing it in Guatemala. In 1947, they were injecting people down in Central America with syphilis, gonorrhea, and other diseases to see the effects of these diseases on these people. These were scientists that were produced by the best colleges in the United States of America. The same colleges that produced the people that robbed all of you who own, own homes in this country, robbed you of your equity. The same people. These are the products of American universities. And until we deal with the fact that without teaching people meaning, without teaching people purpose, you create monsters. You create the disease known as civilization. This is what happens when you divorce education from the sacred. And until we reestablish the true roots of learning and knowledge and why we're learning and what is the purpose of knowledge, we will see it get worse and worse and worse. Muslims have an incredible opportunity right now because we are a people that still, in spite of ourselves, because of our Prophet wasallam, because when he said one of the signs of the end of time is that people will study for other than the sake of God. Learning was not to make more money. It was to make a better human being, not for learning's sake, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. interesting video I mean it's it's sad by now we should know that that's what the education system was created for to 
uh, put us in this box where we, they want us to think according to their propaganda which is very very sad that's why if you have children out there make sure they're doing something they love and not just going to school because you think that's the only way they're going to succeed in life people, many people haven't gone to school and that they've got all these great businesses out there let your child think for themselves don't let society determine how not even society don't let education determine how you think Everything is a propaganda to whoever came up with all these rules. They've made rules. They've told us what's wrong. They've told us what's right. Let's not just um, let's not be slaves to the education system. Otherwise, I agree with everything that was said in this video, which I've been aware of for quite some time. I hope you guys learned something from this video. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget subscribe. And I'll see you in my next reaction video.